welcome to everyone. My name is Sean and you're watching Ren11 Live here on Instagram. I am going to be joined by a wonderful dude called Casper High. Uh, some of you may be aware he is a content creator, uh, part of the Dutch YouTube video zing called Autoblog. So he's been doing that for some time. So we're going to get him on in a second. Let's get Casper on the, here now. Okay. It works. It does work. Amazing. Imagine that. It's it's almost like, you know, we, we practiced this to make sure it did. <laughs> almost. Almost. <laughs> almost. How are you doing, Casper? You okay? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for having me. No, man. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. You know, I've been wanting to do this for some time. We actually had this booked for some time as well, didn't we? So, uh, you know, I felt awkward saying, are you free this day in advance? And, you know, but... <laughs> But you know, it's not that I'm too important or anything like that. It's literally how busy it gets on here. So you got a busy agenda now, man. I mean, I see you doing things almost every night now. I think it started yeah. out with a weekly thing, or maybe twice a week, and now it's it's more. So doing good for yourself. I do you know what? Yeah, I I think part of it is I really enjoy being on live. I, I like being in front of the camera. Another thing is just. During these times, and I, I tried to move away from talking about COVID and all this stuff, um, but, you know, during these times, it's nice to have a bit of escapism, um, you know, the ability to sort of talk about things that are away from all this, you know, poo storm, as it were, um, that we're in. So anything to help. Uh, and it's the only, if it's, if it's a way I can help people, I'll do it. So. There you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> so, Casper. Um, a lot of people in, over in your neck of the woods know you already. Um, you've been doing uh, a lot of video work, you know, in front of the camera. You do a lot of stuff behind the camera as well. You are a fully fledged content creator. Um, but tell us, a, a, you know, a, a bit more about, you know, what you do with Autoblog and how you got to this point. Yeah, the the the, uh, the thing is, I, I I just moved away from Autoblog, but it's a very big part of my my history. That's absolutely true. Oh gosh, um, okay. Uh, well, congratulations or commiserations? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, no, it's it, it's fine, it's fine. I'll, I'll get to it in a second. But um, no, um, actually, the thing is, a lot of people know me from from the YouTube channel. Um, and the thing is, it was never never a, a goal for me to to get my face on video or anything. Um, 12, 13 years ago, I was I was working in uh, advertising, and um, I wanted to do something else. I wanted I wanted to change something up in my life and um, be away from the computer more and go outside and 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 meet more people basically. And um, decided that I wanted to go into automotive and and um, become a photographer basically. Just, I, I'm I'm cutting a few things short here, but we've got one hour I think, so I have to. <laughs> have to be quick. But but um. I wanted to be a, a, an automotive photographer, and I sent an email to the guys at Autoblog asking them, like, okay, guys, do you need a photographer or something, or can I, like, bring coffee or, or whatever? Can I, can I work with you guys and learn from you guys and get to, into the automotive world and maybe shoot some nice photos? And they were like, well, we don't do anything with photography, but we like the way you're um, uh, writing us, so maybe you want to write some articles for us. So I was like, okay, it's, I mean, it was a foot between the door and, and, and let's go for it. And, and it was an entry for me into the automotive world because I wasn't working in, in automotive before. I wasn't working at a dealership or, or anything. I was working, I was, I was doing graphic design for sneaker shops, stuff like that. So a completely different kind of thing. So That's cool. They gave me the trust to, to do that. And um, I worked there for a little over 12 years. Um, and at a certain point they were like, okay, well, we're going to do more with online video. Um, so maybe you want to do like a video, present a video. Um, and I was like, well, not really, but if I do, I can drive the cars. I mean, I can drive them instead of writing about, uh, writing about them. So that was basically the thing for me. Like, I was like, okay, let's, let's drive, let's, let's go. And then doing the video is more something like. Okay, I have to do that, but then I get to drive all these amazing cars. 
So that was how it went, and yeah, that that escalated quickly. We, uh, especially in the first few years, we were like, I think, a top ten automotive YouTube channel, which is kind of big. <laughs> Incredible, uh, oh, of course, man, it's huge. Yeah, but it's, and especially being a completely Dutch uh, channel because we did everything in the, in our native language, so. Yeah, uh, the English uh, uh, viewers had to read subtitles that we, we, we used to put in there. So, yeah, uh, that's how it went. Worked there for a lot of time. Of course, I did a lot of photography as well, because when you're out on a press event or whatever, and you've got your camera with you, why wouldn't you? Of course. Uh, did text writing, tested a lot of cars, drove some amazing cars, cars I could never have dreamt of uh, driving, because, yeah, I mean... Driving an, a 918 Spider, or um, I have to be in Porsche terms, right? So, a 918 Spider, or, or like like cars from my childhood. I drove like a, a, a 934 race car uh, from Porsche. Uh, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Wow, so that was like a lot of dreams came true, and even things I never had dreamt of. So, that was amazing. But the last few years, it was like leveling a bit and there wasn't really a lot evolving anymore i wasn't really growing and i'm i'm just not the kind of guy who can do the same thing over and over again and don't get me wrong driving those cars is great but it kept being the same trick talking to a camera um and there wasn't a lot more coming out and uh yeah so i decided a few months ago that that yeah it, it, it had to go i had to move on basically to keep uh, challenging myself myself and keep developing myself so that's the point where I'm at now but uh, yeah that that's out of blog like that's 12 years in, in what four minutes <laughs> yeah it's not too bad going you know I thought I was yeah. gonna be here all day <laughs> <laughs> so that's it guys thanks for watching everybody cheers take care everyone <laughs> really enjoy <laughs> no it's it's interesting there's a few key points in there but you, you were always a car person, although you weren't involved directly yeah. in cars. Cars yeah. have always been a part of your life. As yeah. you said before, you weren't working with them. Yeah, I wasn't working with them because I didn't really know how to work with them, I think. Um, it was always like my biggest, biggest passion. I, I, my parents say, and I don't know, I mean, I don't have any memory from being that young. But my, but my parents say, I said, uh, Papa and Mama, which is father and mother, and then... After that, I was pointing out cars on the on the highway from the back seat. I was pointing at cars and saying, like, that's a Volvo, that's a, you know. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but that's what my parents tell me. So uh, there's some truth in it, I think. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's always been part of my life. And it, it comes probably from my father, who is the same. We can we can nerd about cars, like, like a, a whole um, a birthday or something, and people are sitting around us like, okay, there they go again, you know. Um, uh, even your father uh, here He's is so saying correct. Yeah. So yeah. Um, now I know your father's I watching. I am your papa's watching. I am not going to swear. I promise you now. So uh, I have to He's show some, some respect. Thing. He's used to some. He's used to some swearing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you, you need to clean your mouth out, mate. Okay. Um, it's interesting. There's there's a lot of parallels. I was exactly the same growing up, but my mum and dad weren't into cars. The milkman massively into cars, and. Um, <laughs> I had that same passion, <laughs> I had that same passion, you know, being able to name cars as a child sitting in the back uh, of, of whatever car parents were in, and mostly Volkswagens or Hondas. And, and I would just like incessantly spot cars and look at them. I have books. I, I was like a, you know, you know how people are like ornithologists into their bird watching or, or you have trains or, or planes. I had books with me ticking off cars if I saw them. You know, oh, and, cool. uh, yeah, yeah, it was just, it was just forever like that. So I, I get what you're saying. So what the opportunity arose from when you were in design? Um, how did that opportunity come about? It basically didn't. Um, I, w I was working freelance at that moment. And yeah. um, I was talking about this with my, uh, well, then girlfriend, now wife, um, and I was talking with her, of course, about not being really happy with what I was doing um, and decided I, I needed to change things up. And she was like, OK, I mean, at that moment, we were just the two of us and we were living in an apartment and we had to pay some rent. But that was it. And, and we didn't have big things to worry about. So she was like, OK, man, 
if you want to do something else, this is your chance. I mean, if you want to do it in 10 years when maybe we have kids and, and, and a mortgage and stuff like that, then, then it might be difficult. But now you can actually change things up. Um, so that's basically how, how it all came together. And then there was like, a, a, I don't know how you say this in English, but a day where you can visit the school to see if you like it. Um, oh, like a, not an inset day, but a... Um... Someone, I know someone's watching who's really good with English. He's going to throw the word up there. And you know exactly what I'm talking about, mate. So, uh, <laughs> Michael, do it now. <laughs> I had to name drop him so he knows. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Okay. And then that, it's, it's amazing so how opportunities. I went to that day at, at school and, and, and they, they had like... Um, uh, An open day. Uh, sorry? An open day. I just remembered it. An open it. day. Okay, so it's like literally the, the translation from Dutch, which is open dag to open day. Okay. Uh, but um, um, I went there and I talked to a few teachers there and they were like, you can come in. And uh, I, I brought some pictures with me that I had taken be before and just to show them, like to, to find out what they thought my level was. And they were like, yeah, sure, you can start. And then, um, yeah, so that happened. And then, then I got into photography, but I still had my freelance work. So it was like I, I went to school for a day in the week and the other four days I could just work or five days or six days. Um, and in the evenings I would go out and shoot and, 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 and yeah, just just gradually evolved from, from being in design into uh, uh, working as a photographer, basically. And yeah, at the same time, I, I started reaching out to a few titles, uh, uh, among which Outblog. And Outblog were the ones to reply first and most en enthusiastic. So that's how I ended up there. Yeah. And and the rest, as they say, is history. The rest, as they say, is history. And I, actually, until two years ago, I still had one or two clients that I helped out a little with their website or with a logo design or something like that. But last two years, I didn't do anything in that world anymore. And uh, yeah. Maybe I have to do it again now because I have to start a new business probably or have a lot of time left. So if anybody needs an amazing logo, I can see if I still have Adobe InDesign and Illustrator on my computer. <laughs> and see, here we go. We serve as a free no, advertisement. No, I'm not going back that way. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a very um, uh, tough choice to make back then to do something else. And I'm not going to go back into old uh, problems. It's, it's too much to say, but, you know. I hear you. I think it, it, life is full of phases, though, isn't it? You, you, you find yourself in a position, you work hard, you enjoy it. But let's be honest, that's, uh, it's not necessarily going to be for the rest of your life, you know? No, I don't think it should be. I mean, I mean it's fine. I, I've got friends who, who, who do have jobs that they started at when they were 18, and they're still having fun. So, I mean, if you're like that, do it. I mean, I, I'm not here to judge, but... For me, I think it's like, I want to evolve. And if I evolve in photography, that's fine. And I'm still doing a lot of photography work besides Outblock because it was never my full-time job. It was always next to uh, other photography projects. And um, uh, I still do a lot of photography work for other clients. Um, but yeah, Outblock was taking up a lot of time, especially the last few years. And so much time that I, yeah, I, I couldn't really put enough energy and effort in other stuff because it was just yeah there's only so much hours in a day and i already work a few more than i shoot on a day so somewhere you have to like create new opportunities and this was the way to do it makes perfect sense it's interesting to see so how you managed to get in without the necessary experience but you had that life experience you know your abilities with photography you know and your understanding of things yeah. um how important do you think that is then with anyone looking to get into something that they truly love? I think in the end, uh, a friend of mine said it a few years ago, he said, passion goes the longest way. So, so if, if you really are passionate about something, I think you'll always be more successful um, pursuing that instead of going to like a boring job or a job you don't like. Um, I think you, you, if you, if you have like something you really like and you don't necessarily make a lot of money with it, but it's still your passion, it makes you probably a lot happier and a lot better in your work than when you're doing something like, I mean, your job is like, like what, 50%, 60%, 70% of your 
time awake, you know? Probably about 70%, you're right. Yeah, so better do something you like because, I mean, if you have 70% of your day that's boring and dull and you hate your colleagues, and, and why, why would you? Why would you? I mean, find something you truly love. I, I, that, that, that's what worked for me. Um, I've got friends who do exactly the opposite, which it's hard, it's hard for me to understand because, because I, I just couldn't, I think. I couldn't do a job that I don't really feel passionate about. So. But here, yeah, there's, I, I had this conversation with Lee Dean from Duck and Whale on Sunday, and there's this, these three things that every job has. You know, you could have the best pay. It could be a really good distance from you, like it's very close or far, depending on what you see as a benefit. Um, if that 30% you're at home, you don't want to be at home. <laughs> um, or, or, you know, job satisfaction. Yeah. But what normally happens, you only use like two, two of the three. Yeah. Um, so you can have the best pay and it could be really close, but you are doing something you would rather not do um, or, or, you know, any sort of combination. Yeah. But if you can, um, let the free work together. That's, I mean, yeah. That's do you feel good. as a content creator, that is an achievable thing? You know, do you think that you can have your, your cake and eat it? You can enjoy yourself get really well paid and well it, it, with content creation it's not necess, it's not a necessity that you stay at home you can stay at home and do it but there's a lot of people like yourself like me that are willing to travel to get things and yeah. achieve things i think i think as a content creator you can make money um you do have to be um i mean it, it takes time to build up a name and um, mm. it takes time to achieve certain skills, especially when it comes to photography and videography. It's, it's like practice makes perfect. You know, it's, it's, it's the 10,000 hour rule applies to everything. And it applies to uh, photo photography and videography as well. Um, especially in the beginning, you probably need to do everything yourself, go on a selfie stick, stuff like that, because you don't have the money probably to, to, to rent like a sound guy and a camera guy and everything like that. Um, and I think, um, if if you do that well, and if you if you uh, stay sensible, so to say, and have a have, have a, a, a long term vision of where you want to be, then you're probably going to make it. But it's still, I mean, it's it, it it's hard work. It, it nothing comes easy. You know, it's easy to look at YouTube or at Instagram and see like uh, uh, some guy with a, a million followers. But don't forget that that guy had to start somewhere as well. He started out with zero, just like you. Yeah, of course. Um, Just how dude, don't I know. you are and how unique your content content is. Um, yeah, uh, uh, everything uh, or th that decides how successful you'll, you'll be in the end. It's also not just about followers, I think, because it's easy to to like like be blindly or or, or be very focused on those numbers. You know, like I need to have ten thousand views on a video, or I need to have fifty thousand subscribers, or whatever. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily key because I think in the end it's about um, uh, uh, reaching your audience. Mm. And if you need to get um, advertising money, um, you have to be very aware and, and explain to the people who want to advertise with you like, okay, I might not have like 100,000 followers, but I have a very specific niche I'm in or uh i have a, a specific audience that is very interested in your product so there there's always um you have to find that balance you know and and in the end you can have enough in one viewer if he, if he buys something from you that's worth like a year's pay then you don't only need the one viewer you know you just of course know where to find him and how to reach him uh, and you raise such a good point i think one of the things that i've found is so important especially doing this page run 11 now some of some of the people watching you are here because of Casper, um, so you, you probably don't know me from Adam, but my page around 11 is all focused on Porsches, all focused on 911. One of the things that I find is a drive is getting to know my the people who watch me. So, you know, be it through conversation, they send me DMs. This is how we started talking to each other. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and those kind of social aspects for me are the best part of this whole this, these whole shenanigans um it's social media you know the clues in a title be social and it's much the same in youtube i think uh, a frame of mind to have if you know something that i've observed is 
I'm there for the, at the moment, it's very small. I've only got 332 as of last check today, I think it was, 332 subscribers. But I, I want to love each and every one of them, you know. So every time they make a comment, I comment back. I reply to them. I make sure that I star it, even if it's a complaint. And we will talk about a video that's had a few complaints about, not because of the content, but because of, you know, sound, maybe. Um, oh, I that. Know. <laughs> yeah, that one. But it's been my most commented um, video so far, which is interesting. So uh, I'm obviously onto something. But, you know, I really welcome that level of like, you could improve this, you could improve that. And if I don't reply to them, they'll probably feel like, well, does he actually care what I think? True. In, on TV, we don't get the opportunity a lot of the time um, with you know, the, the people watching to actually interact with them. Sometimes if you're lucky, you're one in like a million people who send, makes a call to them to say, I'll give you a shout out or something like that. But we have this opportunity like here with YouTube to, to really sort of become, I, I don't want to say friendly, be friendly, but also make some kind of uh, a group or a, a um, a family of something, you know, a fan base, but, you know, have a real good interaction with that fan base. And I think that's something that's very, very important as well. You've got to love the people that you're with. And if you love them, I'm sure it will just, it, if Instagram's proof of anything, it will increase over time uh, exponentially. You know, this is only since, I've only had Ren 11 since March last year. So there you go. It says a lot. Um, you have yeah. over twice the followers that I have on Instagram, so... Very good. <laughs> yeah, but I, I suppose I, the, the following aspect of it, although there is a, a, a positive about it, it means more people are seeing the message and getting an idea of what I like, and they seem to like the same things that I like in the same sort of style. I think it's more important that they are they they feel like I care when they when they send me stuff i always reply to everyone that ever, ever dms me or anything like that they ask me advice and i'm thinking uh okay i'll give you some advice not doctor's advice or anything like that i've got a really bad boil on my arm does this look <laughs> wrong to you it's like mate i'm not a doctor but i'll prod it still <laughs> there you go i wouldn't go there no no but but it's it's important you know i think um i think youtube allows a lot more interaction than tv would you know, and I think that's why the medium's moving forward. If we, if, sorry, I'm kind of tired of hijacking this conversation now a little bit, but if we look at um, TV, most people watch TV or film, not on a TV anymore, even though we've got these massive 52, 60, 75 inch TVs, where do they look at content? They're fine. You know, so you, you've got this opportunity to have a vested, uh, an audience with a vested interest in you and interact with them directly in a, a format, which I can send a message to them after they reply to me and they'll see it on their phone when they're walking around so they can reply instantly. Yeah. That, that kind of level is like mind blowing when you consider it and the opportunities that are around. So. And the average TV show has like 60 people between uh, the interviewer and the, the person being interviewed for arranging all kinds of stuff and getting them to the studio and, and where, where, where can you uh, um, declare your, your parking uh, fee and stuff like that. <laughs> There's got a hundred people running around. I've been on TV. It's, it's crazy. I mean, you have to go to makeup and stuff like that. <sighs> They've got their work cut out with me. If they can see any part of my face that needs makeup, because most of it's covered by, by hair. But, you know, uh, I get that. I, I think... I think it's it's all changing though, you know. Um, in the last five ten years, you can see Netflix has changed that. Do you, does anyone ever watch if they've got the entire series on, you know, like let's say Sons of Anarchy on TV? Do you just watch one episode and wait next week to watch the other one? No, you I, don't. You watch that entire season. That's definitely the thing of the past. Nobody wants that anymore. No, no. The trick is to I, get I, people. I don't even think I, I've ever heard anyone say like, "Oh, I like the rom romantic idea of." watching something this week and then having to wait till next week to see how it all panned out. And, and <laughs> I'm going to be thinking about the cliffhanger all week. With, that's just, that's a thing of the past, but it's, it's not, it's not now anymore. I mean, you just want to binge watch the series or. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I just want to have one up on that person. I'm going to wait till next week. Great. Well, I'm going to watch all the episodes. Yeah. I'm going to see the making of, and I'm going to move on to the next one. You boring sub. So, yeah. You know, um, 
Yeah, see, it, it, there's there's a lot of stuff. And another thing to add to that as well, um, everyone sees these people that have like millions of followers or thousands of subscribers. And as you say, it's a journey only to get there. But there's a journey behind each and every video. You know, it's not a simple case of I'm just going to film myself, boom, and put it out there. No. My God. Steep no, learning no, curve. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. Otherwise, I'd be doing that all the time, man. <laughs> No, and I, I've made a lot of videos in the past, but yeah, that's it's always you got to do your research and, and, and line everything up. Yeah, it's still a lot of work, but it's a lot easier to do like this than when you work for TV or something, because then you have to keep like all those people I just mentioned, you have to keep them happy and, and get them at the same place at the same time. So, yeah. Mm, keeping people happy. Mm, okay. Mm. Uh, I'll remember that. I'll see if I can put that in a note somewhere to remind myself <laughs> one day, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that just a natural quality you have, or I have a natural quality of pissing people off. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop doing it, only because it's fun. It is fun. It's fun. it's fun to piss people off sometimes. It's fun, and then I kill them with kindness, and they they don't um, they don't appreciate that. So. <laughs> So um, what, before we get on to the next subject, I just want to uh, ask everyone, if you have any questions for Casper, um, please feel free to type them out. There is a question mark box, if you notice at the bottom of your screen, type it, press that button and type the question in there. So we'll see a number of questions come up and I'll be able to ask them uh, in the next like uh, 15 or 20 minutes or so. Um, so please write them down and I promise I'll get to them. Uh, we'll, we'll get to them as well, uh, any sort of opinions and whatnot. But let's talk about the proper thing that we want to talk about. You know, uh, you, you did a really cool thing. And I see a red car, and I know you've got a 205 GTI, so that's definitely, yeah. And I know you've got the best 911 ever. And I don't care if anyone has a go at me and says something otherwise. Don't at me. The 996. <laughs> you know, there you go. If anyone can see the back, 996. There you go. Yeah. Um, so... You've got the best 911 in the world. We won't tell your dad that because I know he's just sold one. Um, but <laughs> why would you? <laughs> why would you do that? Um, I'm, you? I'm, I, I thought I thought it was part of the cool guys, but now he's got a 997 instead. I'm hoping he's still on. And, uh, I'm going to get. Oh, I have gonna... to be careful here because my father's watching and he owned a 996 and he now owns a 997. So oh. I have to tread lightly here, but <laughs> 996 is just a better car. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, it, it is a better car. It's it's a rawer experience. But but tell us about your nine nine six. How you happen to get it, and, and you know, All right? Shall tell I us more. Show you? Because I can turn the camera around, or maybe uh, let's yeah, see. let's let's go. Let's, let's... There we go. Okay, so this is my. Uh... <laughs> There's your dad. <laughs> Hi, dad. <laughs> Love you. Cheers. Uh, yeah, this is my nine and six. Um, this is basically, um, well, since my dad is here anyway, I can tell. Um, my father had, had a, a dream one day that he, wants, he wanted to own a Porsche. And um, here in the Netherlands, I don't know if you had this in the UK, but in, in the Netherlands, they had like uh, police cars, uh, Porsche 911 Targas uh, in the 60s and 70s. And I think also in the 80s, maybe a little bit into the 90s. So these were like the highway uh, traffic police. And um, interesting, targets as well. Yeah, targets because then they could stand up uh, on the uh, passenger seat and look back and and uh, flag people down, wave people down if there was like a traffic jam or something like that. <laughs> the story is, I don't know if it's true, but the story is that they chose for the uh, 911 Targa or the 911 uh, because uh, it was very easy to drive it backwards at a high speed, so that they could drive backwards on the uh, uh, on the side. Uh, how do you call it? Uh, not the, oh, not the, the hard shoulder. The hard shoulder, yeah. So they could drive um, uh, backwards on the hard shoulder w on, with high speed so that they could uh, drive back when there was a traffic jam building up so they could warn the people. But I don't know if it's true. But anyway, a uh, um, little segue. But um, uh, my father... It's a good wanted, segue. Yeah, yeah. My father wanted to own a Porsche and um, he basically infected me with the virus. If I'm honest, um, when I was a kid... <laughs> Yeah, but it's true. Um, it, when I was a kid, I was I'll, sh I'll switch back for a little while. Um, when I was a kid, I wanted I, like I had a Dutch Viper on my bedroom wall, and okay. I had a Ferrari F40, and um, there was a Porsche 959 as well, but it was a smaller poster. I have to be honest. And the appreciation for the brand came because my father 
was so crazy about that car and he was talking about it and um uh, at a certain moment he owned one and we would take drives in it and i that's what sparked the the uh, love for the brand in me and now i wouldn't people will call me crazy but i wouldn't trade this well this uh, where's my that car that car the black one <laughs> I, I wouldn't trade that car for a Ferrari <laughs> F40 now, probably, because no, it's, hey. it became a goal. And um, it first became a dream because I, I never thought it would be as successful as my father was. And, um, you know, he did well for himself, built a company. And, and at a certain moment, he could re reward himself with the car. But at that moment, I was still working like for a boss. And it was like something like like unachievable for me. Um but at a certain, certain moment, it became like it, it went from a dream to a goal or something, if that made sense. A few years yeah. ago, I was like, OK, if I, if I do this right and if I save up the, uh, uh, my money, then, then maybe in a few years time, I can actually buy a 996. So that's how that happened. I bought this car last November. Um, it's not the prettiest of 911s. I mean, it's not perfect. It's... Um, um, it's it, it has like a little less than 100,000 miles on it, but it's been used. It's been, I mean, it's got some some paint chips and some little scratches and it's not perfect. Come but on. that's, but that's, that's the point. That's yeah, the point, isn't it? It's supposed yeah. to be used. Absolutely. It's it's an early car, so it's like, uh, let's get this out of the way, all the 996 haters. Um, yes, these cars have problems with their IMS bearings, but the early cars, they have dual row. Mm -hmm. and um dual row uh, uh they seem to be failing less um mine has not been replaced i've driven the shit out of it it's still in one piece so i know i don't know i, I mean one day when i do the clutch i'll probably do it um replace it but i don't know it's it's not a, not that huge a problem the internet wants to make you believe yeah um, so it's an early car i actually bought it like th those side blinkers they were white when i bought it because i think the previous owner once put them on there because he thought it looked better changed them back to orange because i just love the orange blinkers on those early cars yeah uh, wheels are not from uh, 996 they are a 997 wheel um, but i like them so they're on there um, but they're an 18 as well aren't they that's they're a nice an one yeah it's an that's 18 unique. wheel it's a 997 Carrera S wheel, I think. Mm. Um, they're 18 inch, 8 inch wide in the front and 10 in the back. Oh, okay, so GT3 fitment. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, Dot one. But with without the um, uh, without all the like the, the the suspension arms and stuff, of course. But it's not it's not uh, um, it, it has been lowered. It's uh, got an uh, AST suspension. Uh, nice. a 5100 kit on them, so it's like uh, coil, coil overs. I have to get my English straight here. Coil overs, so, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been lowered quite a bit. It's got adjustable damping, um, so I can, like, uh, at the back of the uh, at the back of the wheel, I can adjust a little uh, turning thing, and then it gets stiffer or a, a, a bit more spongy. And um, it's got the factory LSD. Which was a big Whoa. plus for me. I was really happy with that. Um, nice. Actually, I, I bought it without knowing that it had one, but I found out a few weeks later. <laughs> it's a cool story. But because the previous owner, he um, um, he sent me a list with the options, and I think he missed one line of the option sticker that's under the hood. Yeah. So um, the the LSD and stuff was not on there. Um, and then later I, uh, I read some stuff on the internet and I was like, okay, I'm going to check those option codes. And then I found out that it does have them. That's weird. Um, yeah, that's very cool. I was very, very happy with that. Um, it's got a graphite gray interior. It's got a sunroof too. Um, mm -hmm. for those of you who consider buying a car like this, if it has a sunroof, try it because I did try it, but I only tried this position. And um, yeah, it, once I opened it completely, um, those little rubbers here, uh, <laughs> one, of them, one, one of them went with the roof and the roof jammed and I had to get everything fixed. So yeah, yeah that, was, uh, that was a struggle. But yeah, that's, that's my car. That's my, my baby, basically. Uh, a a um, tip from the top for everyone. Um, anything that's electrical on a car, try it before you buy it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the stupid thing is I did try it, but it was drizzling that day, so I wasn't going to slide it over completely. I was just like, okay, button works, and I tried it a little bit back and forth. That's like, <laughs> fine. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I hate it. Hard day, but, but, you uh, know, yeah, so, oh, yeah, such a somebody, car. Somebody's saying LSD mostly on 99 models in the States. This is a U.S. car, uh, so it's imported into the Netherlands. Um, but it's like it's got the Euro bumpers and stuff on there, so, yeah. I was going to say, I didn't notice any overfenders in any of the pictures that yet. Not overfenders. They've got those uh, bumper, uh, bumperettes. Yeah. 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 But that's I'd love the bumperettes. There, but, um, yeah. So uh, uh, it's a US car um, and it mm -hmm. has the LED. So that's a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah. I, I don't, that's the only thing my car doesn't have. And I'm gutted about it. It doesn't have the LSD um, on there. There's aftermarket um, options. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll see if I need it. You know, I was it was planning to take it on its first track day um, end of this month, but the actual event's been postponed, so I won't be able to do it now. Um, I'll see how I need it. Yeah. Mine's a road car, so is it essential? I don't know. Mine it's too. But I, I always like to see it as like a trackable road car, so I wanna I wanna be able to go to a track day or or maybe a drift day. I actually, had, I drifted with it already. Um, like within two weeks of owning it, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's also the thing. I mean, now it's my daily car. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like to use it and I like to trash it around. And I don't know how, but they seem to be pretty much indestructible. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. I've used a lot of cars, but never like one crazy warning light other than things for like, like, uh, uh, wear items, like, like the brake pads or something. Hmm. I have to replace them, but yeah. And, and that's the thing, isn't it? You know, if people buy into a Porsche, and I know this is quite a broad thing, and I know we've got quite a vested interest with some of the patrons watching, uh, but you buy into a Porsche and you're getting a really solid, solid car. Um, I had a conversation, I think it was with, with Dan Fur, Ricky Dinky Dan Fur, who just put Quaif Diff on there. Yep, Quaif or, or Wave Track or something uh, would be ideal as an aftermarket option. Um, and the, the percentage of Porsches still out there being driven, old ones, you know, it's yeah. testament to the build quality, how they hold up, and also the fan base for looking after them. You know, they, they truly are like the attainable supercar. If you have a dream car, I used, to, I used to have two lists for cars, dream cars that I'd never be able to afford and the attainable dream cars that one day I'll get. And the 996 was on that. Uh, as was the 964, but, you know, that's kind of um, escaped me now. But, you know, the it, it it was amazing to see how the 911s are just so well built. They're like fucking panzer tanks, aren't they? Yeah. You yeah. know, and really, really good piece of kit. There, there's some stuff that goes wrong. I mean, you have like, like I've had some annoyances, like the you have the little um, uh, hatches for the roof bars. Yep. they're like they're in the color of the car and then you have little white plastic stuff beneath there that that basically holds up those latches and the whites the white plastic things were broken i informed the porsche sender uh like okay what's gonna cost me and they, they were like i think they were three or four euros each i was like okay give me four and i'll just replace them and be, be done with it but then i had to take up like take off the roof strip and then the attachments broke, so I had to buy new attachments, and I, the rubber <laughs> fell apart, and so I had to buy new rubbers. And in the end, I was like 300, 300 euros down it's a, for it's four bits of plastic that cost me three or four euros each. It's a 21 year old car, it's to be expected. Yeah, you know? yeah. uh, I think that's another thing to get into, and also another thing remember when you're buying a car like that, it was in the UK about 65,000 pounds brand new. Just because it's more attainable doesn't mean parts and servicing are going to be ah, that some stuff cheap. Is, it, it's expensive. On the other hand, it's worth in, investi investigating um, what you need and where you buy it because there's a lot of stuff that you can buy at a Porsche Center that comes in the same or in a different box but from the same manufacturer. And mm. I mean, the internet is full of those stories. Um, and if I mean, if it's on the internet, it's true, right? So. No, but no. you have to do your research. But there's a lot of stuff that you can get um, uh, a lot more uh, uh, for a lot less money than when you go to a Porsche Center. And so, certain stuff you want to get at a Porsche Center, and cer certain things you want to have done right. But like for basic wear and tear items, you know, 
I would I would basically always go to uh, like a specialist and not to the Porsche Center because it's just gonna it's gonna be a big difference. Um, sometimes it's like two three times more expensive for the same part if you go to yeah. the Porsche Center. I do, uh, for the parts, I get it. Servicing, I mean, uh, I, I go to an independent for mine. You probably go to an independent yeah. garage for yours. But I, I, I believe and I, I know why, you know, servicing costs are so pricey if you go to a, a Porsche center because the, the, the technicians, which remember they're not mechanics, the technicians because a lot of the stuff they're doing is on computer. The training that goes into... Um, you know, making sure that they are on point with things is, is, is so high, you know, um, and they're constantly being trained. And now we're looking at electrification. So there's a lot, an awful lot of money being dropped onto educating these techs to make sure and ensure that they do a great job. That's true. That's true. Um, so, you know, th I, I see why it's so, so costly. However, at the same time, these cars are old. I'm not going to be finding... Porsche Connect on the car. It's not going to be, it doesn't have PCM. It doesn't have, um, you know, uh, PCBs. It doesn't have, it's got hardly anything really, which is one of the plus sides of having it. It's a, it, like your car, it's a cable throttle because it's an early car. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty old in that sense. So I don't need to worry about it. And most independents know their way around a 996 because there's so many of them out there. So. Yeah. You know, it's a good car. It's a wicked car. Um, are you going to be doing much else to it then? Uh, it's, I mean, I've, I've bought this car to keep it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm not somebody who keeps his stuff stock. I, I, I like adjusting it. I'm very happy with how it is right now. Um, but there's absolutely things I want to change. Uh, when I showed you the interior, you saw the four-spoke steering wheel. Yeah. Um, which I don't really like. Um, I was looking at putting in a free spoke. I actually have one laying around here. So if anybody needs one, hit me up because um, it, with, with an airbag, but I tried it. Um, I, I uh, was sitting in a GT2 996, which has the free spoke wheel and also the uh, Recaro seats. Ah. Uh, sitting in it, I still can't move my um, uh, legs around. Mm -hmm. uh, or not freely enough so I'm going to have to switch to a smaller wheel so pr probably putting in a Momo or something like that um, just because yeah you know I want to be able to do a decent heel and toe stuff like that um, so yeah that's that's something that's going to change I want to have different seats sometime uh, I'm not, not in a big hurry with it but I do want to have some like more bucket seats um, but I still have to be reclinable because i've got two kids i don't i didn't show you but i've got two kid seats in the back i saw I, the child seats in the yeah you know. i've got i've got two uh, uh two daughters and they're four years old and they love being in the back of that thing but it, it's yeah so it's a family car as well i mean if i have to go somewhere in the weekend like drive up to my parents who live like 15 or 20 minutes away then i take this car because we got we, we've got another car but yeah this is this is more fun they're gonna have the best memories growing up yeah, I, I hope so. I hope they love it. And if they don't, it's fine as well. I'm not somebody who pushes his own um, hobbies onto his kids, but if they love it, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. It would be great to be able to talk with my daughters one day about cars like I do with my father now, you know? It's just, yeah. That would, that would be very cool. Yeah. yeah. That's what it's all about, man. It's, it, it's a beautiful ah, car. Porsche, hey, Jemko. Sorry. So, somebody's replying, we, we've got this hashtag Porsche uh, met Peuters. It's like Porsche with uh, small kids. Um, because he has uh, two Chelsea's in his car as well, and we need up. He's a good friend. Is <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing? You know, I've got uh, my my son as well. He's uh, six. He's very tall for his age, um, so we've managed to uh, allow him to accommodate him in a in a booster seat. Um, yeah. And yeah, he loves it. He loves actually being in the car. He loves all the the smells and everything. He, you know, being able. He, he's uh, he likes being able to rest his arm. Uh, you know, by the transmission tunnel, um, you know, rest it on there so he can actually chill out a little bit more comfortably on there as well. With he's, car. He's, he's quite uh, um, uh, big for his age, you say. So if, you, if you're starting to lose headroom, you can take out the, um, uh, the seats, you know, that are, you know, you do and take right it right off. You can just take them away and put the seat on the bottom of the car. 
Um, so there you go. It's it's even better. Uh, I'd love bucket seats as well, like you. But um, yeah. again, I've got to consider that until he's too big, and then I'll be like, "Well, you're just going to get you there yourself." I don't care if you're eight years old. Find a way. Yeah, I'm joking. I wouldn't do that to myself. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to make yourself fit in there. You know, it's it, but it works. I, I have to put my seat a little bit in, uh, more to the front than I normally have it when they're uh, sitting uh, behind me. But it's okay. It's, it, it, I mean, I can. Drive like that for hours, it's no problem. Ah, oh, pushy. Um, the 996, then, you know, it does get an awful lot of stick. But I, I mentioned earlier, I've released a video about owning a 996, and uh, yeah. uh there, the there's system, right, uh, sorry, the beep one, <laughs> the one with the really loud beeps that deafen people. Yeah. It got a lot of complaints for the sound, but the content everyone seemed to like. So I'm like, oh, it's a, it's a pe pleasure pain thing. I wanted to introduce people to you, see. Um, audibly, it would kill them. But, you know, content-wise, they're like, yeah, it's great. But they're bleeding from their ears now. Um, and it's it's a common thing, isn't it? And it still happens to this day. You know, you have a conversation with someone about, you know, you know I've got a 911. And then they go, oh, okay, which one? Uh, and if they say which one, it's great. Or some of them are like, oh, is it, is it like the air cool one or is it the shit one? And I'm like, mm. yeah, it's, it's actually the shit one, you know, to be fair. And uh, and suddenly, Actually, good question. You, you you tell them that they that, that you own a nine eleven. I just say I've got a nine nine six, and then ah, if, interesting. If, if you can see if somebody appreciates it or not. You know. Well, yeah, I suppose because I say nine eleven because not many people people outside of it who aren't interested in nine elevens may not know if I'm say nine nine six. They'll be like, "Do you mean a Ducati?" <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. Sometimes so, that comes up when you search for something on on, on uh, Google like uh, nine nine six uh, uh, whatever ref counter or something, and then you get like all those motorbike parts, and you're like, I don't want that. <laughs> Can you imagine someone ordering Olins for a nine nine six, and they just get two forks for the front? <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> that would be, um, but yeah, it. it I've noticed it. And like I said in the video, I don't really care what people think because I bought that car for myself. Everything I'm doing to that car is for myself. Much like you, you're doing yeah. what you, you know, you see fit and these little amendments here and there are all to make you, they're all for you because you like the idea of what they do and, and, and you know, everything to do with it. It's your car. It's your personal taste. Yeah. Um, how have you found people about talking about your 911, especially as you did put it on Autoblog. Um, and there was a video saying, I've just got a 911 and you're yeah. driving the vehicle. How have you found response? Uh, most, of the, most of the people like it. There's always going to be haters. I mean, uh, if you put something on the internet, there's always people who are going to agree with you and people who don't, uh, which is fine. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I don't care. Um, I think in the end, if you, if you uh, put any value into other people's opinions about the choices you make. That's, I, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense. I, you have to follow your own beliefs and no way that everybody, everybody's going to agree with you when you do certain things to your car. I've, I've got a set of wheels in mind for this car. I actually test fitted them this afternoon. And I know if I'm going to put them on, there's going to be people like, whoa. And there's going to be people like, really, really? You're gonna put that on your car, and, and that's fine. I mean, I'm doing it for me. It's I, I think it's the best looking wheel on that on that car. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm absolutely over the moon that I that I that I managed to source a set. But I mean, I'm I'm doing it because I like it. You know, it's my car, and if I don't like it anymore in a half a year, I'm gonna take them off and put something else on it. And if I want to paint it pink in a few weeks, then I'm gonna paint it pink. I mean, it's just a car. You know, people people can get so upset over stuff like that, and especially like if you if you go to a, <laughs> a, a club meeting or something from Porsche owners, there's always going to be this group of guys who thinks that every every little thing on the car has to be OEM and 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 completely correct how it came out of the factory. That's fine. I mean, th I appreciate that as well. I I appreciate that there's people who are trying to conserve. Uh, 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 some of the most beautiful cars in the world, but come on, this is a 996. It's not like there's two left, you know. It's 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 there's thousands and thousands of them, you know. So if exactly. somebody's gonna adjust a black one for fuck's sake, I mean, there, there's so much of those cars. Why would we all drive in the same car? There's no fun in that. 
Exactly. You know, cars, uh, and I'm sure everyone agrees, and please tell us uh, if, if you don't, but a car is a representation of the owner. You know, it doesn't matter, yeah. you know, in what capacity. You can tell someone doesn't care about cars because they may have a brand new car and it's a nice car because it has all the mod cons that they require, they need in a guest them from A to B. You yeah. can tell someone who, you know, spends a lot of time with their car because they may have an old car like us and it doesn't look as old as you may think. It's in really good condition and well looked after. Yeah. You know, um, we've started Person, a hashtag. I'm laughing, I'm laughing at the hashtag. Yeah, paint it pink. <laughs> it's just not going to happen, guys. Just if wait. I want to, then I will, okay? Just wait until they see the three spokes you've got ready for the cup. Yeah. I didn't tell them, did I? Oh, man, I'm so sorry. Yeah, ah, it's okay. Or am I joking? Oh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that would be cool though. I think so. I think some like um, I'm going Photoshop. Enkies. <laughs> some JDM three spokes. JDM Something from like a top secret like Supra. Yeah. Yeah, man, that would look sick. Um, but there, but, there, but there are certain cars that look amazing when they have three spoke wheels. Yeah. In Definitely. the right scene, in the right, and, and even if it's, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be your taste, but I'm, I'm sitting in a, a, a Saab garage. Saab oh. has amazing free spoke wheels back yes. in the day. You know, it's, 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 and thanks for having me, by the way, Martin. Uh, it's great that I can sit here and have my two cars and it's, I'm sitting dry and I've got light and everything. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm drinking your coffee as well. Thanks. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a very cool Michelin mug as well. I like that. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, <laughs> we do any product placement. I, I should have contacted Michelin before we started this because I, I've been plugging them like four times, five times now. Yes. We should get for this. Maybe we should actually look to do that, you know, get them to, to pull their finger out and, um, and say, well, look, they're representing us, these guys. Um, I agree, though. Um, you know, with regards to modifications of cars, you've got to make your car look individual. You've got to make the car look like it's, it's part of you because. It is part of you. It's part of your lifestyle. It's part of everything. Oh, here we go. And someone's asking about, is that a 205 in the background? Yeah, did, I, did, I, did I get that right? Sorry? Did I get that right? Hello, 205 in the background? Yeah, 205 in the background. You did get it right. You're, you're learning Dutch, man. Man, wow. I, I already saw, I saw someone say that the video quality shit, and I, they said that in Dutch as well. And I was like, <laughs> I, I, can, I, can, I can read Dutch. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, You've been doing yeah. so much research that you can now speak Dutch. That's that's yeah. that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'd be stuck when people start talking to me in Dutch. I'll be just like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can, can you say the word in, in Dutch? Do you think? Achtergrond. <laughs> what does that mean? That's background. That's what you want. <laughs> okay, that sounded that sounded worse than what it's. <laughs> yeah, but that's oh, a two or five. You, you asked me about both. Cars. Yes, that's right. This is a 205. So this is like, I bought this car. I wasn't even looking for a 205. Um, I was looking for a 106 Rally because I, I, I love those cars. Whoa, you, 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 can, car. you can quite, um, for quite, quite a little bit of money, you can make them a lot of fun. So I, mm. I was looking for an affordable project car and I was like, nosing around but it's hard to find a 106 rally that hasn't rusted its whole back end off and, and mm. the search was going on for a while and then a friend of mine um he was like oh man uh, somebody i know is gonna sell his 205 gdi and i was like nah, i'm not really looking for that and i i was i was in doubt but then um the guy was telling me i'm gonna switch the camera around again uh, okay. the guy was telling me he was like um you know it's it's a first owner car and it has like, uh, well, I think it's in miles, it's like 80,000 or something. I think a bit less even. It has its original paint. It has orange blinkers. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> orange blinkers. Those ambers. Uh, yeah. Um, Gingicators, somebody called them on my 996. <laughs> Gingicators. Gingicators. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was like first on the car. It's the 1.6. Uh, you, you've got the 1.6 and the 1.9. 1 um, the 1.9 is great because it has, has more power. But this one, um, it has shorter gearings. So you're actually a bit more involved in the driving, uh, which is nice. And it's just, it's an amazing car. And people who know me from Autoblog, they, they know this. 
Oh, it's it's locked because the it's it's standing here, sitting here with uh, <laughs> with Martin. It's it's sort of my my this is my sort of one car storage in his showroom. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it, it was an amazing opportunity. I went to look at the car, I test drove it, and uh, I was with a friend, and he was looking at me after 300 yards, and he was like, "Okay, you're gonna buy this car, right?" I'm yeah, I'm gonna buy this car. So. In the end, I didn't buy a project car, but I bought a car that's pretty much like in its complete original state. And this is like what I was referring to earlier. I don't mind people preserving a car that's that's um, uh, in its original state. But um, for this car, I don't think there's a lot of 205 GDIs in this state anymore. I think mm -hmm. most of them are like they, they exist out of five or six or seven 205 GDIs. And, and, and if all been trashed uh, around and I bought this car from like I think you the, the the owner was 87 years old something like that it was really like an old guy and they just used it as their daily vehicle for a long time and after that his uh, grandson drove around in it for about a year um, but he was really uh, I think he's here Thomas is that you yeah yeah uh, there you go <laughs> uh, right on cue as well <laughs> Uh, yeah, so 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 um, he is uh, uh, he was driving around for it in it for about a year or something, and um, changed up two little things like the uh, exhaust, the the, the 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 final damper for a bit more noise, which I actually kept on for a long time because I just liked it and I was driving around in it. But I was never gonna mod this car because it was just too perfect, and I don't think you see a lot of these cars anymore. You know, and 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 Fair. then I think it's good to preserve something, something. But like a 996, wh where there are like I don't know how many there are still around, and they can easily be uh, modified. Um, you know, it's just. And if I didn't want to to mod that car, it was my right. But I just for this car, I thought it was well. Let's keep it stuck. And and do you know what? As you Did can, you if you want to, I, everything's I, reversible. Did your did your beautiful ring light die on you? Oh, still, <laughs> barely. Dark there, man. I know it's getting really dark. <laughs> so you can't see my my horrible paws and bags under my eyes from running the puppy. <laughs> um, we have uh, two minutes, less than two minutes to oh answer three gosh. questions. Okay? okay, so it's good timing. So first question is. Uh, Okay, for the both of you, what is your dream Porsche model? And if you can't choose a Porsche, which car would you buy to drive? Okay. Um, That's a good one, Peter. Okay. Hi, Peter. Nice that you're watching. Um, Thank you, Vag Driving. Vector, he's actually in your... Uh, you're a Volkswagen guy as well, right? Oh, yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's not digress. Um, <laughs> uh, dream Porsche model would be... Like, modern car, new car, uh, would be GT3 Touring. Okay. Um, any car at all, Carrera GT. Okay. Um, for me, um, any car, dream Porsche model, it would probably be a, oh, this is tough. It changes. Do you know what? Actually, I'll say it. A 993, my battery's completely died on that. 993 GT2. Um, I'd be happy with that, but I'd keep the, the, the arches exposed, bare carbon and the rest of the body and guards. Cool. Uh, with a ducktail spoiler in the back as well, just to piss people off, number one. Um, and if I couldn't but have that, I'd have to have something else, I'd have an NSX. NSX. Yeah, I love my I love my Hondas. So, yeah. Oh, um, if you think you support you. Ah, okay, then uh, Ferrari F40. Okay, there you go. Ferrari F40, wicked. Okay, we've got 36 seconds. There is, okay, there's too many questions here, but there is one question, oh... Okay, here's one. Wooden shifter in a modern Porsche. Yay or nay? You've got five yay. seconds. Yay. 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 Yeah, I'd say yay too. Okay, next question. PDK or the seven-speed manual? Manual always, yeah. i got to say it depends on the actual car itself. Ah, you know, if, if I've got a track car and I want to just keep hold of the corners going around corners, PDK. Manual for everyday driving. Five seconds left. Casper, thank you so much for being a guest, brother. We'll have to do this again. Bye. We will. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.